Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today, I'd like to speak to you, my sisters, about the power of your words, the power of God's word, and how it is that Christian women conduct themselves in terms of what they say. Our conversation should be holy, always. And these days, it, it's very common for people to go about on the internet, on a keyboard, using words to um, conduct what they believe is spiritual warfare. And that's one of the things I want to address in this video, because spiritual warfare has nothing to do with modern day technology and going on a computer and pointing out to someone else that they're wrong about something. And verily, the way that people conduct themselves in doing this is often very rude and hostile. And the reason for that is, is that they're behind a screen. No one can see their face or that, their identity. And so it's very easy to be very uh, stern and harsh and cutting with one's words without really facing the other person and seeing the impact that you are having on, on that person's heart. There are things in the Bible that tell us that we should uh, correct people, that we should uh, reprove and, and rebuke people at times. But for Christian women, we want to to take this, this counsel from the Word of God very carefully. We don't want to just take something like that and run with it and think that we're being righteous when in fact we have not examined ourselves, we're not familiar with the scripture, we think we're very right, and we may be, but we might also be wrong about being right. Because sometimes to point someone's fault out or their error out or their mistake out can actually cause things to become worse, not better. And speaking the truth in the scripture is also referred to as speaking the truth in love. And a lot of women in particular jump right to rebuking people and complaining about them and reviling them. And this is not Christian conduct, and we don't want to engage in it. I want to begin in the Word of God today in Proverbs chapter 18. Let's read verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We all know what it feels like when someone says something to us that's very cutting and cruel. It can verily break our heart far worse than if somebody smacked us in the face with their fist. So we can understand that verily the scripture is absolutely true and that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So a Christian has restraint with their words, recognizing that they have, they reside in fallen flesh. So even when we're saved, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, we also live in fallen flesh. And sometimes the first thing that occurs to us to say is not the right thing to say. And the scripture speaks to this. Let's read here, um, pardon me, in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 20. Let's read here what the Word of God has to say about speaking quickly. Seeing thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than of him. Those who are familiar with this channel, and I realize many of you are new to this channel, but those of you who are familiar with this channel know that I speak very strongly against Christians being on Facebook and any kind of social media wherein we are interacting with people in a very impulsive manner. So we're, we're just typing something really quickly. We can cause a lot of harm with that and not realize it. Because the people that we're dealing with, we don't know. We're having conversations that are very fast and quickly forgotten as well. So we say something in haste. We don't see the person we're talking to. We verily know very little about them. And we act in such a way sometimes as to, to be very cutting and sharp because the, the social media platforms make it so that people are cutting and sharp. So you say something very quickly and very sharply. You can edit it to make it especially sharp. 
And when we do such things, we cause much harm. And there is a particular problem that has manifested to me recently where women who are married to a man are interacting with him about his Facebook account and, and chastising him about his Facebook behavior. And this has happened with a few of you, so please don't think I'm referring to any one of you personally because I'm not. This seems to be a systemic problem where people are thinking that, that what is happening on Facebook is really important and it isn't. What's happening on Facebook is an illusion and, and it's false and verily people say and do things they ought not to say and do. And if we as Christian women observe our husband doing something on Facebook that is inappropriate, we should not, you know, seize his phone or, or start, start yelling at him or rebuking him because of something like that. That is the wrong way to be addressing our husband. If you have questions about how to speak to your husband, about how to conduct yourself as a godly woman in marriage, please write to me and I will send you some links about that topic. But in particular here, what I'm talking about is our words. So perhaps we feel that we've been injured and all people have been injured in some way. There's nothing special about having been wounded in this life. We've all been wounded. But whatever our wounds may be, we may then feel entitled to speak about the wounding that has happened unto us, maybe to the person who's done it, maybe to someone else. And the problem is, is that speaking about matters like that are, are harmful. If we're going to a counselor, so we're going to a therapist or a counselor, a life coach, and we're discussing with that person who is not a Christian, in most cases, our problems. What we're doing is we are speaking out of our mouth. We're repeating things that give then give life to the darkness. So we're not going to this therapist, counselor, life coach, speaking to them the word of God and the hope that is in us. Rather, we're saying, I'm a Christian. I have this belief system and here are all my problems and I'm going to spew forth from my mouth all my opinions and feelings and injuries that have happened. And some of them very well may be real, but repeating them is not going to help you. If you want to know more about counseling and therapy, please write to me and I'll send you a link about that as well. But this is a snare of the enemy to get us to, to think that being validated verbally, so when we speak something and getting someone else's wise counsel or opinion about that, someone offering sympathy to us, that somehow that is healing and it is not. Christians don't speak and repeat things that are evil unto others, and especially not to people in the world. So what we do when we have things like that in our heart is we go before the throne of grace and talk to God. As Christians, we know that the whole point of salvation, the whole reason God sent his only begotten son to die for mankind's sin was to restore us into relationship with him. And why on earth would we seek the ideas and counsel from a, a person in the world about, for example, our marriage or our family history or our childhood? Why would we go to someone in the world who does not know Jesus Christ and pay them for their opinion? Because verily, what they will do is they'll want to keep us keep to, they want to keep us talking because that's how they earn their living. And they're not loyal to us. They're loyal to a system, a system of men that has educated them that to talk about things that have harmed a person is helpful. And it isn't. Verily, what that does is it resurrects that thing that caused you harm 10 minutes ago, 10 years ago, or even when you were very young. It makes it worse because it brings it into the present time. And now you are reinforcing it by your words. Again, the word of God says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And it's not just what we speak unto someone. So we might say something to someone harshly in a moment of anger or in, in a time of emotional upset. And we don't realize that we've wounded that person. So if we're carrying wounds because of something someone else said to us, 
If we're not examining ourselves and thinking and praying and seeking the Lord before we speak, we will be bringing forth death into the the people around us and into our own lives. And in particular, when we're married, if we revile our husband, maybe he's done something he shouldn't have done. Maybe he's really harmed us in some way. When we go around repeating that, particularly on social media, but really in any situation, when we go around repeating that, we're bringing death into that situation by reinforcing and repeating the evil that was committed into the minds of other people. But we're also forgetting that our husband, we are married to him, we are one flesh with him. And when we we speak death about him, we're also speaking death unto ourselves. So I urge you, my sisters, to Think about your words and what you're saying. Now, in the the Bible, we we read about admonishing, about reproving and rebuking. And basically, these are three ways in which we use our mouth to correct. So to admonish someone is to warn, warn them firmly. So as a mother, we might say to a child, stay away from that stove. It's very hot. I don't want you anywhere near it because I don't want you to be burned. That would be an admonishment. It's a firm warning. A reproof or to reprove someone is to reprimand them. So, for example, the child has heard us say that. And then once we've looked away and then we look back, we see the child is getting closer and closer to the stove. So we might reprimand them. We might say, I told you to get away from that stove. Now, come away from there immediately unless you want a spanking. And I know a lot of people don't like spanking, but it's better than being burned by a stove. And it's obviously the loving thing to do in some situations. The third thing is to rebuke someone. So say the child has indeed gone over and is about to put their hand on the stove because maybe they see something up there they want. At that point, we would rebuke them. And rebuking is sharp correction. And that would be to bodily pull the child away from the the stove, give them a a couple of swats on the rear end and get in their face, you know, get down on your knees. You're at their eye level with your finger and you say, I told you not to do that. Now go to your room because if you can't stay away from the stove, you're not going to be in the kitchen. That would be a rebuke. This is a proper way for a Christian woman to speak these kinds of words in a a situation where she has a righteous authority. So the woman's authority over her children is God-given. And in these circumstances, this, this is the proper way to implement that. But a Christian woman doesn't go on Facebook and rebuke some religious person who, who is, um, say, a man who's a religious person, not a Christian, but he might believe himself to be. She doesn't rebuke him. She doesn't go about on Facebook rebuking her husband. And a lot of people think that, that that's what they need to do when they feel they've been harmed in some way. And they're doing so without self-examination. I can guarantee it. Because if we have examined ourselves, I would say as women, as Christian women, 99.9% of the time to go around and do that kind of thing with our mouth or with our fingertips is inappropriate and wrong. And ultimately, you would regret it if you were aware of the consequences of it. You see, women are under the authority of their husband. And if they're not married, they're under either the authority of their earthly father or they're under the authority of Jesus Christ and and hold themselves to the, the doctrine of Jesus Christ and what it says about godly women. So women don't go around rebuking and chastising people that they have no authority over. And the scripture very clearly says, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. So it is not for a woman to to be conducting herself this way in her relationships with men in general. And if you're offended by that, then you're not familiar with what the scripture says. And I urge you to contact me and I'll give you some links that explain to you about 
gender roles and how God made men and women to be different and why we adhere to these principles. But the point of this video is to talk about our words and how we conduct ourselves. Now, if you're an older woman, and, and I'm older, as you can clearly see, there are occasions sometimes where I, I might need to uh, admonish someone. I might need to warn them. I might even need to reprove, reprove them. But it's very rare that I need to rebuke, uh, say, a woman who's contacted me. It's very, very rare for me to have to do that. Usually admonishment is about the level I operate in when someone has done something or said something that is um, dangerous or inappropriate. I, I always warn people first. So when I gave the example of the mother, the mother would start with, with in, in that way with the child, starting with admonishment and then with reproof and then with rebuke. And the same thing is true of elder sisters who might be a Titus woman in the body of Christ. We would begin and, and follow through in the same manner in most cases. But it really is not a, a, a manifestation of godly conduct on the part of a Christian sister to be going around complaining about people, rebuking them, chastising them with her words, and getting on her keyboard as, as thinking she's engaged in spiritual warfare, when what she's engaged in is things like reviling and evil speaking, which are sins in the Bible that say, that are written of, that are clearly set, it's spoken in the, in the scripture, pardon me, it is clearly spoken in the scripture that people who engage in these kinds of things do not inherit the kingdom. Now, men have their own parameters for behavior, but I'm a sister. I don't speak to men. I'm speaking to you, my sisters, and we need to be sober and wise in the way that we speak. So I want to turn now to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And I just want to review with you a couple of scriptures in this chapter of the Bible. The first one is uh, verse, pardon me, verse 26. And here we read, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27, Neither give place to the devil. You see, when we are angry, that doesn't mean we have license to speak everything that is in our mind when we're angry. It's to be angry can be a motivating, energizing emotion. And there are times when it's appropriate to feel anger. But what I would say about that is usually it is not appropriate to speak from our anger. So in the moment with your, when you're angry, you want to be aware that there's an opportunity there for you to sin. Because when we're feeling upset, we can speak something that later we will regret. This is what it means here when it says, neither give place to the devil. Or at least it's one of the things that we can do that give place to the devil. When we are angry and allow ourselves to speak something or to do something, out of that anger. So be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. This means if we have anger, bitterness, resentment in our heart, we need to take that before the Lord in prayer before we go to sleep. For example, if we're angry at our husband for something he's done to us, we, we need to take that before the Lord and get straight with the Lord before we go to bed. And the reason why is if we don't do so, these things tend to build up and become huge problems. The other thing is, is that sometimes there's something we need to say or do before we go to bed with our husband. We need to speak to him respectfully about what's bothering us so that that matter can be cleared up right away. And this is something that's very important in marriage for Christian women to keep in mind. If you're very angry at your husband about something, you need to clear it up with him rather than carry it around. And that because what will happen if you do that is you'll resent him and, and you'll be speaking to your girlfriends and, and so forth and so on about that. You'll be reviling him and slandering him. And that will harm him and it will harm you and it will harm your marriage. 
So there are times when we're angry about something where we do need to speak about it, but not off the top of our head, not the first thing that comes into our heart and mind. Rather, we realize that what comes out of our mouth is what defiles us. That's what Jesus said. I'll put that passage in the Bible in the description box for you below so you can read it. But Jesus said, what comes out of our mouth is what defiles us. And what comes out of our mouth, I would say, is what we put into our heart. So when we're looking online at narcissistic abuse forums who are telling us how evil these people are or how wicked our husband is, we're not examining ourselves. That's the first thing that's not happening. So we're looking online to gather data and evidence to prove our, our anger to be justified. And then we join these forums and we speak all this, this um, anger and wrath to other people. It's a very deadly thing. So let's read on now in verse uh, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It is frequently spoken on this YouTube channel that by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. So when we perceive iniquity in the heart of someone else, the first thing we have to do to avoid being a hypocrite is to get the log out of our own eye first in order to be helpful, to be edifying to the person that we're speaking to. So Jesus said that it's hypocrisy to correct someone else before you've removed the beam out of your own eye. And the reason for this is, is because it's natural for the human being to be able to perceive wrong in another. And when we speak to that person without examining ourselves first, we will fall into hypocrisy because it's inevitable if we're not walking properly with our God. So the way to walk properly as a Christian is to examine your heart daily before the throne, to say to, to God things like, Father, examine me, try my reins, and lead me in the way everlasting. When we do this, then we will see our own fault and what, and there's always a part we play in situations. And please don't tell me that, oh, no, 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 you're innocent or, or there's a situation. No, there's always a part we play. If we're an adult, we have played a part in what has happened. And, and so if we're not examining ourselves, then we're not seeing the part that we played. And when we speak correction unto someone, we will be a hypocrite and verily what we speak will not have good fruit come forth from it because it's not humble. It's very easy to become arrogant and haughty and proud in the way that we speak unto other people if we're not examining ourselves first as Jesus Christ commanded. So when we read here, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying when we are examining ourselves, particularly when we're angry or upset, but really all the time, what we could ask ourselves are things like, is this going to be helpful unto the person I'm speaking it to? And not only is this going to be helpful, but is the manner in which I'm speaking it going to be helpful unto them? And when we are looking at it that way, we are speaking the way God wants us to, because by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And it's so easy to forget how bad our sin was not that long ago and how we were in the darkness ourselves. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. And let's begin here in verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You see, truth should not be used as a weapon 
truth should be spoken for the benefit of the person you're speaking to. And while there are times when the truth may verily cut someone, when we speak the truth to them in love, it will cut them in a way that is good. When we speak from our flesh and our own pride and self-righteousness, from our anger, from our fear, then it will cut in a way that is harmful. And we all know what it is to be cut in that way. So we don't want to be that way. We used to be of darkness, but now we are of the light. Finally, as a uh, Christian, I want to say that we want to be remembering that we are here as ambassadors for Christ. We're not here to defend ourselves. We're not here to prove the other people wrong. We're not here to get glory. We're here to glorify God and stand in the truth so that other people can find the same salvation that we have been given. When Jesus Christ was on the earth, he spoke about judgment and the word. And I want to share this with you because it will help you a lot as you're considering your mouth and, and, and your keyboard and the things that are coming forth from your heart. Jesus said, starting at verse 46 of John chapter 12, I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me, so Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, is speaking here. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. When we are a Christian, we want to be speaking the word of God to people. And the way for that to occur is for that to be what we're consuming. So we're not consuming Facebook posts. We're not consuming uh, end times religious fear porn on the internet. We're not consuming narcissistic abuse information. Rather, we're consuming the word of God. And then that will be what proceeds out of our heart. Then, when we speak the word of God to people, it's sharp, it's cutting, it's true. And the word of God will bear good fruit for the kingdom of God, whether it be to, to make it apparent that someone doesn't love the truth or that they do love the, tr the truth. The word is what judges. So we don't, Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, he said, I didn't come to judge, I came to save. And while we're here, we are not here to judge, we're here to save. That doesn't mean that we can't discern. It means that we don't exact condemnation and, and, and wrath upon people, you see? So we speak the truth to people in love, which requires discernment. We have to be able to distinguish between good and evil. And then we dwell in the word of God. We examine ourselves in the light of God's word. And then what we speak unto someone won't be self-interested, won't be proud, won't be haughty, won't be any kind of repetition of harms done. Rather, we will speak in such a way as for the edification of the hearer. See, sometimes it is necessary to say something about something that is happening, but to do so with a spirit of warning someone or admonishing them if necessary is done for their benefit. It's, it's not to, to prove ourselves right or to get the final word in or, or to lash out at someone. To speak the truth in love sometimes means that our words are going to make people uncomfortable. But as much as possible, we remember that we were once of the darkness ourselves. We dwell in fallen flesh. And so therefore, we examine ourselves first before we speak. 
and then speak with a, an attitude of, will this help the other person or not? If they need repentance, will it help them repent or will it make them even more rebellious? Will it give them truth that maybe the, if they don't hear it now, they might reflect on it later? Is it edifying unto them? Because if it isn't, it shouldn't be spoken. So death and life are in the power of the tongue, and a Christian's tongue bears the word of life, which is God's word. And as much as possible, as we're walking with Jesus Christ, abiding in his word, let us be mindful of the power of our of our tongue and the things that we say and do, and not only the impact that has on the people around us and the people on the internet, but it also has an impact on how God's people are perceived. And let us let us refrain from always speaking the first thing that seems right unto us. Let's not be hasty in our words anymore, my sisters. Let's seek the Lord carefully, remembering that we are capable of doing much harm when we speak. And we don't want to be of the darkness anymore. We want to put away the things of the old man and take up the things of the kingdom of God, which is to bear the word of, of God. I hope this message has clarified this matter for you, my sisters. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me if you have questions, particularly about the subjects I mentioned in the beginning of the video, or to make a comment in the comment section below. May the word of the Lord go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.